What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Today we're gonna be looking at a D Marble video where he says some dumb shit about the sun again. In the solar system, Uranus is much further away from the sun than the Earth. Okay, obviously, because the sun's 93 million miles away from Earth, and it's 1.7 billion miles away from uh, the sun. Okay, uh, Uranus is, that is. So, with that in mind, and the, uh, you know, Uranus, the magnetosphere occasionally opening to allow solar winds through, um, why don't we deal with solar winds on Earth? So not only does D. Marble not understand the sun, but he also does not understand Uranus's magnetosphere, how it's different from Earth's magnetosphere or magnetic field. So obviously we're going to cover that too. If you're interested in any of this dumb shit, then please stay tuned. So as we all know, D. Marble, or Daryl, as I'll refer to him from here on out, him and people like him just hate NASA for whatever reason. I mean, they think that NASA controls everything that has to do with space. So naturally, Daryl is going to have a very bad reaction to what we're going to cover today. You know, one of the things that I find odd about this society that we live in is how willing and, and aggressively people will ridicule those of us who do not place our faith in these so-called professionals uh, and these space agencies, NASA in particular. Daryl is going to be a prime example of how an irrational fear of NASA is going to lead him down a path to blaming NASA for things it did not say. We will also learn how the Earth handles solar winds in contrast to how Uranus handles the solar winds. Before that, though, Daryl has a very odd problem with NASA's picture of the sun for October, or for Halloween in particular. Let me show you this article. NASA shares image of the sun resembling a jack-o'-lantern. This is an article from Fox News. Okay, and here's video already played. All right. NASA on Sunday got into the Halloween spirit and posted an image of the sun that resembled a flaming jack-o'-lantern. NASA chief says Pluto should be a planet. This is actually a separate article. But speaking of Pluto and NASA, um, along the lines of also being trolled, you remember this one? Where they actually had a picture of Pluto and then outline of Pluto the dog from Disney in the same shape? Yeah. Okay, that type of stuff happens with NASA often. He's about to get more into the whole sun jack-o'-lantern thing here in a minute, but first I wanted to touch on this whole Pluto deal. It's oddly relevant to the topic that he's wanting to address, meaning the jack-o'-lantern sun, because both Pluto and the shape that we perceive on Pluto and this jack-o'-lantern sun are perfect examples of pareidolia. Pareidolia is where you recognize patterns where there's not supposed to be patterns. It's basically a trick of the mind. You see, our minds have evolved to recognize patterns so that we can survive better. Anyways, Daryl thinks that NASA is trolling us both with the jack-o'-lantern sun, but also the picture of uh, Pluto and the various forms that we see in the, uh, the shape on Pluto. Because, you see... The Pluto image hasn't only been li linked to Pluto the dog from the Mickey Mouse, uh, you, you know, Disney franchise, but it's also been likened to a heart. It's not NASA or anyone trolling you, Daryl. It's just our minds recognizing a pattern that isn't there. Anyway, let's move on here. The space agency said the photo was taken October 8th, 2014 by its Solar Dynamics Ob Observatory satellite. The flares that are visible are ultraviolet light from its active regions. Here's the image. See the whole jack-o'-lantern thing in here. Alright, and let's take note of this. NASA took a photo in of the sun in 2014. Okay? They're not saying that's an image. They're saying it's a photo. But here, let's uh, continue reading back here. Come back to that in a little bit. 
The active regions in this image appear brighter because those are the areas that emit more light and energy, the statement said. They are markers of an intense and complex set of magnetic fields hovering in the sun's atmosphere, the corona. This image blends together two sets of extreme ultraviolet wavelengths, typically colorized in gold and yellow, to create a particularly Halloween-like appearance. And uh, NASA's really good at covering their tracks as far as explaining away why their BS appears to be BS. And, you know, you notice how they called it image over here, but right on the image, they say NASA took a photo. And this is what we're supposed to believe is an actual photo of the sun. So... Basically, what I get out of this is that Daryl is upset that NASA used both photo and image to refer to the picture that uh, was released by NASA of the Jack Lantern Sun. Just to put this in perspective, this is akin to being upset over Ford, Ford, using both motor vehicle and car to refer to a Ford Mustang. For one thing, the NASA spokesman only actually ever used the word image. They did not use the word photo to refer to this picture of the sun. And the news article only used the word photo when introducing the topic in general. What's going on with Daryl here is that he is getting mixed up with who is saying photo and who is saying image, and then just getting irrationally mad at NASA for using both, supposedly to troll or confuse people. Honestly, this is kind of minor. And it's a lot like pulling ass hairs off a mosquito. The image that we're ultimately talking about here was actually created by blending two separate images of extreme ultraviolet wavelengths captured back in 2014. It's still a real image of the sun. It's just filtered and combined. Just because some Fox News reporter doesn't know how to correctly reference the image that's being talked about in the article doesn't mean that NASA is trying to confuse or troll you, Daryl. Here. Now, if you go into Google and you actually type in sun through a solar filter, these are the images that you're going to get. Nothing too exciting here, but that's what NASA does. They're just kind of extra with this stuff. You know, it, it's... Like I said, you know, we're the ones that can pick up on the fact that NASA's trolling. Also, there's video. One of these is a video of a guy actually looking through his telescope. Yeah, here it is right here. Through a telescope with a solar filter on YouTube. And um, it's a short video. It's about 46 seconds along those lines. But yeah, it's just a guy zoomed in with a solar filter with his telescope. Uh, okay. Just to emphasize here, they imaged the sun using filters that captured extreme ultraviolet wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. These are not part of the visible light spectrum. You cannot see them with the naked eye. That means they wouldn't be visible through a telescope. You see, the scientists that put together these images just assign colors to the different wavelengths in order to give us an image that we could understand. That's not what ultraviolet looks like, Daryl, because we cannot actually perceive the ultraviolet spectrum. And actually, the image that he has is a lot bigger than NASA's because, I mean, you know, they want you to believe that the sun is 93 million miles away, which it's not. But this guy with his telescope was able to zoom in closer than NASA. Think about that for a little bit. You know, I'm not exactly sure what kind of telescope this guy has, but I'm fairly certain it's not of the same standard as NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Not to mention the fact that the sun is verifiably 93 million miles away. I mean, you can do basic geometry with the sun's movement through the sky and figure that out. Uh, Daryl has no fucking idea how geometry or photography work. But, like I said, we're the ones that know that we're being trolled. Another good opportunity to <laughs> pick up on how we're being trolled uh, is, uh, you know, a couple of these throwback stories. Like this one, for instance, is uh, from Metro uh, Metro CO UK, that is. NASA wants to probe deep into Uranus in search of smelly gas. Yeah, that this is this is a real story. Oh, so are we going to keep doing that thing where you misattribute some saying to NASA or a NASA scientist? It's painfully obvious that the news writers having fun with the story. 
Jesus Christ. So let's let's look into this a little bit. Science has stunned the world this year with the revelation that Uranus actually does smell like farts and NASA probe could soon actually breathe in the fumes. Yeah. Yeah, they went there. Amy Simon of NASA's Ice Giants pre-decadal uh, study group told the Gravity Assist podcast the next mission to Uranus should use an atmospheric probe. Yeah. This is this is them trolling you again. Jesus fuck, Daryl, just read it your fucking self. The scientists didn't say that they were going to be sending a probe to see if it smells like your ass. They only said that the next mission to the planet should be an atmospheric probe. Not that it was there to smell Uranus's farts out of a wine glass. So in doing some quick research here in post-production, I found out that University of Oxford researchers uh, examined the planet's uh, infrared light through the Gemini North Telescope, and they discovered clouds of hydrogen sulfide spreading into Uranus's upper atmosphere. And we know that this uh, particular toxic gas smells a lot like rotten eggs or methane out of your ass. So that explains the very top portion where it says that scientists say that, you know, Uranus smells like gas. But again, NASA still did not say that Uranus smelled like gas or someone's farts or anything like that. It's the University of Oxford researchers that made that particular find and published it in Nature Astronomy, a peer-reviewed journal. And just because we can know what hyd hydrogen sulfide smells like, does it mean that this is like a trolling effort? So anyway, um, I mean, we could we could look at this like first thing right off. NASA wants to probe deep into Uranus in search of smelly gas. You wonder if Beavis and Butthead's in charge of the NASA marketing department when they're coming up with this stuff or somebody along that same line of maturity, but... No, this is a real article. Oh, this is not an official statement from fucking NASA. At this point, you have got to be lying to your audience in order to make your point because it's just fucking too much. Now, people with common sense would look at this and say, obviously, they're being trolled. But no, NASA took it a step further. And there's a follow up article on this one. Uh, this is from the Science News Reporter. And they're explaining this. Now, let's, let's look at this one. Uranus opens and closes every day to let out hot wind, according to scientists. And according to scientists, uh, it was determined that people will believe what's said as long as you say, according to scientists. Are you fucking serious? We're going to do this a third time? So the topic that we're talking about now is better understood from this IBT article that I have linked in the description. Basically, some Georgia Tech scientists noticed that it's still not NASA. Used data from the Voyager 2 satellite that passed by Uranus something like 30 years ago. Apparently, the magnetosphere uh, fluctuates every day. Earth's magnetosphere responds differently because it fluctuates in response to solar winds. The reason for this difference is most likely the orientation of the two planets. While Earth is steadily at a 23 degree tilt, uh, you have Uranus that is completely tilted on its side. You see, the magnetosphere is what actually protects the Earth from the solar winds. At the poles, the magnetosphere is weaker, thereby allowing the solar winds to affect our atmosphere. And thus we have stuff like the Aurora Borealis. Daryl seems to think that NASA themselves wrote this article and the scientists themselves use this crude language, but he's lying to you. Yeah, so this is the image that we have here. The, these two little blue balls and then the smoke coming out of the... Yeah, they actually did that. Uranus is all over the place. It spins weirdly, its magnetic field is off-center, and now we've just found out it may open and shut its magnetosphere every day, too. The research at Zen Cow and Carol Patey uh, from the Georgia Institute of Technology was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Space Physics. Got to throw that in. You know, stuff that everybody doesn't understand. There's only a specialized group of people who understand the concept of space physics. Oh, this is like mocking a doctor for having a specialized degree to remove the tumor that Daryl gave me in this video. 
Modeling the system around Uranus, they found that its magnetosphere occasionally opens up to allow solar wind through. This seems to happen almost every day, about every 17 Earth hours. Okay, now, let's say we actually do believe this. Let's read back over this. Modeling the system around Uranus, they found that its magnetosphere occasionally opens up to allow solar wind through. Now, um, real quick, let's, let's get on a freestyle here. Distance of Uranus. Uh, we're just going to go into Google. Distance of Uranus. Uh, distance at its closest distance, the distance of Uranus from the star, I'm guessing they mean the sun, is 1.7 billion miles away. At its furthest, it's 1.89 billion miles away. On average, the planet travels between 19 times as far as the sun as the Earth does. Okay, so uh, it's determined that in the solar system, Uranus is much further away from the sun did you seriously have to look that up in order to make this statement? I mean, I get that you're trying to be transparent, but damn. Obviously, because the sun's 93 million miles away from Earth, and it's 1.7 billion miles away from uh, the sun. Okay? Uh, Uranus is, that is. So, with that in mind, and the, you know, Uranus, the magnetosphere occasionally opening to allow solar winds through, um, why don't we deal with solar winds on Earth? I mean, since we're so much closer. I mean, is that something that only happens to these other planets? I mean, is that something that we have to deal with here on Earth as far as solar winds? Well, yes, we do. We have a magnetic field that deflects most of the solar winds, and when it doesn't deflect it and the solar winds actually do affect our atmosphere, we end up with things like auroras. I mean, you know that this is basic shit that you can, like, Google, right? Which I find strange because, I mean, you use Google to determine how far away the sun is and how far away uh, Uranus is from the sun and all this other stuff. You, you're fine using Google then, but when it comes to shit that actually matters, you don't use Google. You see, this makes you seem very dishonest there, Daryl, because you're not presenting both sides of the argument. You're only presenting the one side of the argument where you don't understand this stuff, but you fail to provide the second side of the argument where you actually look shit up and you do the due diligence and learn some shit. You, you won't do that, though, which is just fucking amazing to me. It's just something to think about because if we're so much closer to the sun than Uranus is, and Uranus has to open its magnetosphere once a day to release solar winds, Earth is a lot closer to the sun than Uranus is, apparently, according to the globe model. But we never hear about the Earth's magnetosphere having to open up to release these solar winds. Oh, God. That's because our planet works differently than Uranus. You see, Uranus is tilted on its side, like I've said already in this video, and that is most likely the reason why the magnetosphere operates differently than Earth's magnetosphere. You see, our planet doesn't do that. Our magnetic field does fluctuate in intensity though, and it always has. Well, that's all that Daryl has for us today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go down below and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of dipshitty video. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice, and I will see you heathens later.